Hi guys, welcome to the Big Vito brand. I'm Noelle LaGrasso, this is Big Vito, and I'm here with Mr. Big Vito, and we're also here with our very special guest, David Arquette. Welcome to the Big Vito brand. David, what's going on? I hope everything is good. Thanks, yeah. Welcome, so welcome. We've been waiting for a while to get you on, and I'm glad today is the day, a happy day. People, we are live, baby, live on the Big Vito brand. We have David Arquette. David. <laughs> How yeah. have you been doing? You're looking great. Can't right. you on the big veto brand. This is bigger than being on screen with the rock or De Niro. You know, <laughs> Go on. I don't know about it. No, he has no, this no. ongoing thing with the rock, David. I don't think yeah. I've told you about this. He, well, yeah. You're in some kind of imaginary competition. You are? You're in a feud with the rock? In yeah. his mind. You with the rock? I got a few feuds like that in my mind, too. Yeah, He's a box office bust. He's got nothing happening. I can't <laughs> myself, you know, <laughs> next week, you know, is he anywhere near anything? What is in this? Oh, what's he got that you don't got? Nothing. Don't let anyone tell you different. Rock ain't got nothing. He ain't even got ball is happening. You know, that thing is a HBO bust himself. You know what I mean? <laughs> and what was, the, what was the last time The Rock was on top? Last time you was with Hogan to get the rub, we all know what happened with that. So come on. Oh come my on. God. Oh. You're going back. You're going, you're holding some grudge. He's all over the place today. I don't know. He, he, he had an extra special day yesterday, so he's all hyper. Yeah. What, what? What's the special day? Our anniversary was yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Happy anniversary. Thank, Thank you. you. He gets really excited when he sees Tigger at Magic Kingdom, and I think he's like living off of that right now. No, he's like got a big know. Tigger thing. I got my man caught, Dave. You know how that was. It took a ticket up. Until you saw Tigger, you're like, look who it is. And yeah. I was like, yeah. I didn't even high five him. I slapped him. Yeah, Tigger's got a good spirit, he's got a good energy to him. He ran up to Winnie the Pooh and was like, just a high five, just a high five. <laughs> What's yeah. I, I just got this bit too. I'm all about it. Do you see that? Can you see? Little Charlie Brown? Yeah, you got some Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown going on. Charlie Brown. Yeah. Uh-oh. We froze. Hold on. Did I do something wrong? Oh, man. What happened? It could be them. It may not be us. Oh, we're back. It's, the, it's just... The, okay. You were still good. Okay, good. You're still good. It's choppy. So you're a big Charlie Brown guy then, obviously. You got the well, I, like, I like all sort of like things like that, like Tigger, Winnie the Pooh. Charlie, come here. I'm doing an interview. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Dog running around that might interfere in a minute because he's an attention hound. So, you know. <laughs> David, I got, I got a question for you. Yeah. Now, I heard that you are wrestling full time or you got back in the wrestling game. And uh, I'm probably one of the few guys in WCW who appreciated um, the run you had during WCW. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's the, I never really had a chance to really wrestle or learn how to wrestle or, you know, it was more of a, a storyline and all that. And, you know, since wrestling's changed a lot and, you know, smaller guys are, are kind of in the ring now and independent scenes happening. You know, I uh, I don't know. I just, it seemed like the right time because a lot of people, I don't know about you, but I hate being the butt of a joke. Like, you know, that's a worse idea than making David Arquette the champ. So I was just kind of sick of people talking trash. So I was like, you know what? Let me study it. Let me figure out why people got so mad at me in the first place. Let me get out there and, and see what I can do. And it's been a blast just really learning how to wrestle, you know, being sort of accepted in the in the dressing room and backstage and all that. So and then learning just the intricacies of some of the stuff and I'm learning a lot. But it's it's been a blast. 
One of our uh, one of our people in our chat room says that they appreciate all the attention that you brought to WCW. It's addicted to profit. Said he he appreciates that. If people are still talking about it, it was a good thing, not a bad thing. Now, yeah. Is, hey, David, you want to know something? Yeah, something I learned a long time ago, and this is something you could take with you. And this is like a veteran passing on to thank you. Die, okay. Oh, I froze. Hold on. I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> You're not frozen. You're not frozen. Okay. Yeah, but the, uh, the sound goes out. Okay. Go yeah. for it. Never feel bad about what people say. You know why? Because if they had beef with you, right, they would talk to you in person, they would take it up with you in the ring, or they try to kick your ass. And I could tell you from experience, there have been a lot of guys who, you know, talk shit on me or say anything or do anything, but any It keeps freezing when I get all these nuggets of, of gold and information. Oh. Hold on. Yes, and I don't mind what these people say. And you do you. do you. Just do you, man. You're doing a good job of it. Hey, yeah. thanks, man. So tell me something. Like, a lot of the time, like, how many real fights have you had break out in the ring? Not real fights. You know what I mean? Like, you extra want to know, you want to know David? When it started to get stiff, when it started to get stiff, everybody knew I was a tough guy. So if you wanted to hit me hard, I hit you harder. If you wanted to hit me harder, I had some more. And I said, we can keep going all night. I ain't backing down. And they got the point. So right. it's not a fight. Is it like, you want to give me one? I'll give you one. If you get if you get a potato head, no big deal. You take one. You get a black right. eye, it looks sexy, and it looks sexy for all the ladies and your wife afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But that's not even a big thing. It's just that when guys try to take liberties, that's when you got to stick up for yourself. And you know the difference between work and a guy throwing you around. And when it's time to take care of yourself, that's when you got to really put a stop to it and learn one or two things to protect yourself in the ring that you can master and then you will be okay. But I don't think, you know what? I don't think guys are looking to hurt you or do anything to you. I think more or less. I think they're... there's a couple guys that actually want to fight me. Like not, <laughs> I, don't, I think they want to get in an octagon, not a, a squared circle. You know what I mean? I, and you know what? That That's really ridiculous because that's not what pro wrestling's about. And you know what? Right. When you talk about pro wrestling, you're supposed to go in there and work and make money and draw money. This ain't a fight game. Right. People are asking us a ton, and I'm getting inboxed questions and everything. They want to know if you would do, if it was presented to you, like from a Netflix, if you would do like a Ready to Rumble too. Because wrestling fans sure. love that movie. I love it too. I love it too. And, and I would. I mean, I don't know who else would be interested. I'm trying to get, like I'm doing a documentary sort of following this this journey because I kind of wanted it as a unofficial kind of Ready to Rumble too. And because I, I go meet DDP uh, at one of his yoga retreats. So it's like, uh, you know what I mean? It, it would be like, a, you know, just sort of. And then I wanted, you know, Scott Conn, you know, to talk to him about the experience. And so it would be a, a sort of uh, unofficial uh, sequel without like an unscripted sequel. Yeah. But, uh, Scott Kahn was like, he didn't want to be in the documentary. I understand. Listen, it's not a documentary until you go to uh, Disney World with Vito and Russell Tigger. I know, right? Exactly. That's like the I'm fine with all that. I love that movie, and I still love it. And it was a great time of my life and experience. That's sort of why I'm still uh, – I love being part of the business. I had a, uh, I had a conversation with uh, an old acquaintance of yours, Vince Russo, he said both of you had a great conversation, and you guys did a, a lot of good talking. Can you elaborate your, about your time with Vince Russo and what you thought back then and compared to today? Yeah, it was really, it was really great talking to him. It was kind of sort of something that had been a long time coming. I mean, a lot of people had talked on their own. I was always in the dark about what had happened. So he kind of explained it to me, and... He said one of the main reasons it happened was because I was like a fan. You know, he saw me take one of the guitars that Jeff Jarrett had 
and I walked around and had everybody signing it. And he was like, wow, the kid's really a fan. It's not a, you know what I mean? It would be interesting. So I think like part of the idea behind that was to make a fan the champion. And I wasn't pinning another wrestler. I was pinning Eric Bischoff. So they thought it would just be a fun storyline or whatever. But then it sort of got out of hand because obviously they didn't take into consideration the the heritage behind it, the uh, history and the, you know, what the belt stands for. And then if I'm the champion and then, you know, you're supposed to be able to beat up anybody, uh, you know, there. And it was me. But it, people didn't buy it. So. So I, I got it all like, you know, it was really great. And I love Vince and I love like uh, his take on it all. You know, I gr agree with a lot of the stuff he says. I think people are doing some things that are a little too dangerous right now. You know, yeah. just not what I don't think like. The good thing about it. It's dangerous anyway. Is that 20 years later, you and I are probably watched more today than the current product because that's when wrestling was at its best. So compliments to you for doing it and being part of wrestling history because now you're not just a fan. You're part of history right now. And yeah. And part of the most watched thing. Until yeah, thank you too. But, but I, uh, I'm like a little uh, little footnote in there. But uh, but uh, what what's really kind of cool is that wrestling's – you know, it's really, uh, I don't know, it's having a bit of a renaissance right now. I mean, people are really enjoying it. A lot of the indie scenes are really interesting. I mean, I'm starting to meet these people. I just wrestled a guy named uh, King Brian Anthony out of Northeast Wrestling. And, you know, I wasn't really aware of him before. And and although he's, you know, I have a rematch with him and, and he beat me and all that, um, he's a really talented wrestler That that's you know, got a really strong game. And it was, it's cool to like start meeting these people like RJ city, who I'm tag teaming with, you know, I never really knew about him before. He's, you know, really Canada based and sort of a, you know, Buffalo and sort of like the, the Northeast as well. So to get to know these different wrestlers and, and then a lot of the people in the SoCal scene, that's kind of what got me re energized with it is, you know, going to see a bunch of the matches down here in championship wrestling and um, getting to meet some of the fans. You ever go to Lucha Underground? That's out that way. And they yeah, do I went to Lucha Underground. That was that was amazing. I love I love checking that out. Yeah, the indie. You're right. The Indies is kind of like the Renaissance because everybody's kind of turning away from that WWE product that's very repetitive and the same and same people and everybody's going oh who's over here and then that's when you get your your all ins with cody Rhodes, and, and you go to your underground and you get that and then people are going wow there's more to it than what i see on tv and like you're jumping right into the mix with that right now and there's some good people out there to work out your way so oh, I, I know you just wrestled my uh my friend uh james ellsworth yeah <laughs> james is amazing. <laughs> hilarious he's uh really talented wrestler and just he's got a really great sense for comedy too and and just uh and his character and, and he's super talented and such a pro and all he's of that a nice guy too it's not like working somebody with an attitude or that wants to beat you up he's like hey what do you want to do like and he's been up there and he's like hey what's your what's this i always enjoyed working with him because he was such a nice guy he was yeah. so like so professional and polite and and see that's the kind of people you're seeing on the indies now too which i think makes that a lot easier it's for people to make the product likable and yeah. part of that like you're you're right right in there v can we ask some horror movie questions you're yeah. a horror movie person like me right yeah yeah i love horror movies i'm so excited for this halloween coming out Oh, me too. Me too. I'm like super like, rabidly excited. Vito just did a movie. It's out October 5th with Bill Mosley. Oh, cool. He's got a movie coming to AMC. So it's it's like a really like definitely one of those like campy or into it horror movies. Yeah, I love and, that. Because he plays like himself. He's like the Italian tough guy. And I love that. It cracks me up. Really? Yeah, but I'm like super. And you're in Scream, which is like the, the king of the like resurgence of horror. 
So yeah. how, how was that like doing Scream? Like that was a, that was a crazy movie. How how was that like? That was a trip. It was really fun. I mean, to work with Wes Craven alone was just a thrill, and we were all just young and and having fun and up in Santa Rosa. And it's funny. There's a there's a a twenty fifth reunion or something coming up. Uh, in Santa Rosa and the fans rented the house where they shot the final scene in Scream and we're gonna have a big party there or something. Oh, I wanna cool. go. <laughs> That's amazing. People still talk. I just showed this to um, my kids and they hadn't seen it before and they're like, oh my God, they loved it so much. So it like carries on, it holds its like whole deal. Yeah. And uh, I love it. So you were in Scream. That's a great movie. Are you guys thinking about any Scream sequels coming up? Maybe? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Wes passed away, and that was sort of super hard. Obviously, super hard. I love that guy. He's such a mentor to me. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I love playing the character and, and working with my ex, Courtney. And, you know, not many films you walk away with, the, you know, a daughter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty cool about I'm that. A kid all making a movie, so I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. There's not much like that. You have um, you do a, a lot of acting stuff, and Vito and I, well, you do a lot of everything. Like, I know I was kind of researching a little bit, you know, just to see if there's something that I didn't know. You were in the ESPN NFL 2K video game. <laughs> yeah, I've done a couple oh. video games. I did SSS Tricky, and I did the NFL 2K. But it was funny. They did an ESPN NFL 2K. And then I think Madden bought all the rights to NFL, so they shut the shut the um, all the other you know NFL games down, which was fun. But it was fun. That I mean, was so was fun. Like, like yeah, that. I said I gotta YouTube this. <laughs> I'm like on YouTube, look it up. You had like comic books. You did like everything. Yeah, I've done a few things. Yeah. One of our yeah, favorite comic books. One of our favorite things that, that you did, which is totally random, and I told you about and I talked to you, was you did the episode of Dice, where Dice, <laughs> we're laughing because we loved it so much. It was Dice, so. And he's like a haberdashery salesman. <laughs> yeah. And you're basically like Matt Bourne. <laughs> Matt Damon and you're in the board thing. Already. That's like one of our favorite episodes. You were you were also in the um, the cooking show that he did for Fox. Like, are you guys um, outside of like all this like friends, like your buddies? And yeah, Dice is amazing. He's a really generous, nice guy, and uh, I love that show. So I called him up and I was like, I want to be on your show. Um, it's like the greatest show ever. I can't believe it's not on. We love. We watched every episode. Oh. Of I know. It's so silly. There's plenty of room for stuff like that. I don't know why. Yeah, and it's hysterical. Like, Russo and I talk about it all the time because we watch all the same TV shows. Yeah. Podcast a lot about, and we watch some weird stuff. Like, we're teen mom people. And, like, we watch some weird yeah. I like weird stuff like that, too. Yeah. Oh, you do, too? Uh, you'll have to come on my reality show. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. Do you watch Gordon Ramsay? I Ramsey's love stuff? Gordon Ramsay. No, I, don't, I never got into Gordon Ramsay. I don't know why. I don't know. I'm uh, not a guy. Uh, <laughs> it's it's guy. I want to know what was a great show that they and the guy and it kind of got taken off because of um, just like domestic stuff was Flip a Flop. Were you a Flip a Flop fan or a house? Right, fan? right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like those those shows. Yeah. Now Flip a Flop was one of my favorite shows until all the drama hit. And you know how it is being in show business. You yeah. know, it around it gets around. And all of a sudden, everybody's in your suit. But yeah. I mean, that was one of the best shows. And then because of what happened, got canceled, and now it's it's off the air. And it's sad. Another yeah, yeah. show, do you watch, uh, did you used to watch Storage Wars? Yeah, totally. Look how you're that, on a roll. That was a <laughs> great, great program. I know. The issues. I watch that show. The funny thing about Storage Wars is it would always just roll into the next one. So you could just sit back and then next thing you're like three shows in. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. What else do you have coming up? That, uh, what, else, what else is on your agenda? Say you're doing a show with Dice. <laughs> yeah, it is. That would be great. I got a, a movie coming out called Saving Flora, which is a cool film for, a, you know, a family film. 
a girl named Jenna Ortega saves a saves a uh, elephant from the zoo, and um, it's a really sweet film. And then I have a film called Mope that I did, M O P E, and uh, it's a pretty crazy movie about a uh, kind of the porn industry. Mopes in the porn industry are the extras, <laughs> so, so it's really funny about. I mean, now I really want to. That. Just yeah, that's based on a true story. It's kind of crazy. It was based on a true story about this uh, these two guys that were mopes in the in the film industry, and then they started doing a couple roles, but one of them went kind of nuts and and kind of hacked up his friend with a, like a samurai sword or something. Oh. And I play a director in that, so uh, that movie's pretty hardcore. Uh, these are like good projects, but Mope is my movie. I'm going for Mope. Mope could be, I play such a despicable racist in it, but like, you know, doesn't know he's a racist, but just says racist stuff. <laughs> so it's funny. Like old people. You know how some old people don't know they're racist? Totally. <laughs> it's racist. <laughs> it kills me. But that, that sounds like a, I'm, I'm in on that movie. What's your favorite horror movie? Um... Hmm. I, I always like The Shining. I don't know. There's something about psychological about The Shining that I just really love. Like a man slowly going crazy in like this isolated place. There was something just great about that. I love that film. Those Stephen King movies suck me in. Like The Id and like, oh, that, they just suck me in. He just has a way of just creating a universe that just is insane. Even Misery gets me. Yeah, I love Misery. That was an awesome. You just said Vito and Arquette star in the movie The Wrestler 2. That's right. That's <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Zombie wrestlers. Ah. To take on Tigger. That's the whole like premise of The Wrestler 2. Yeah. Like, uh, to take on Tigger and Pooh at Disney. It's a sneak attack. Let me tell you something. If you guys did that as a film, I'd buy it. I don't think Disney is going to want to do that, but like, I'll totally buy it. I'm in. And yeah. if I'll buy it, others will buy it. Like. I don't know if I if I can get on a dice movie. You know, David, I have aspirations as an actor. I and my guys are Seagal, De Niro, Pesci, Stallone, right? Yeah, mostly so, Italians. Mostly Italians. But I would love to do a detective movie where I'm a New York City cop or I'm a, or I'm a cop or detective, and I'm like kicking ass and doing crime and doing something like that. I, I would love to do something like that. That is like one of my goals. Movie you want to be a bad cop, though. You, want you don't cop. want to be a good cop. You want to be a crooked I mean, cop. I mean, if I got to get killed, I mean, you know, hopefully it's at the end and I come back in the sequel. But, okay. <laughs> You'd be great at that. You know what I've learned? I mean, the only way you get anything done in this business is just to do it yourself. You know what I mean? Even if it's like a dope short that you like put together right. Just get some people together and shoot it on a weekend and edit it. It's just an amazing experience to do. It's the only way anything gets done in this business. I'm convinced. Sort of why I started doing this documentary because I'm sitting around, you know, getting hate on the internet. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, just going to do this. Let's get some cameras. Let's start filming it. And, <laughs> and then <laughs> when you manifest it, it becomes a reality. And then it happens before you. You know what I mean? Hate on the internet fuels fuels so much. There was a, a movie, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I know you haven't seen it. I'm sure you've seen it. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Three. They're like make a little cameo during that whole time period because they were filming it at the same time. I see. That's an amazing movie because at the end they get the list from the message board of people hating them because they get this money from the movie. So instead of like you know, buying a house or investing it, they travel to all the places the people that shit on them on this message board and they go and beat them up. <laughs> They'll be like, "Is your screen name mm, talk crap about movies?" Well, yeah, that's me. And they just start kicking the crap out of the guy. Now, if you could do that, in real life, wouldn't that be amazing? They just show up and kick the crap out of whoever's talking shit. Oh, yeah. You would do it. That's why you're sitting there thinking, how can I get people's addresses? <laughs> I can tell my look at his face. He's like, I'm going. I'm going. Fucking kick somebody's ass. <laughs> Vito will do it. If you have like people on the internet that are trolling you, let Vito know. We'll track an IP and send him. And he'll take care of it. Because he's he's a tough guy when it doesn't come to Tigger. And he'll take people out, I think. Will you, will you back up, David? Of course. I got David 100%. You're going to get it. <laughs> what is this person's the longest... The longest tirade about storage wars ever in our chat. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're, they're really into it. Yeah, they're like, 
<laughs> yeah. you mad at the yup guy? No, none of us yet is. It's the yup guy. None of us are on Storage Wars, but this is totally a Storage Wars chat now. They're asking if you're going to be doing any shows in Arizona, and are you still training there? That was Justin's question. Well, I'm I'm, I'm training here in L.A., but uh, I was training with uh, Peter Avalon, and he I know he goes back and forth from L.A. to Arizona, so I'd love to work out there. I love the... Uh, you know, the championship wrestling from Arizona and championship wrestling from Hollywood. So I love I Arizona. Those guys. Cool. Stevie Richards is on. Yeah, I don't know if you remember Stevie Richards. But yeah. I, That's my buddy, my quiet storm buddy. tag partner. He's asking me how long I worked out for. Normal two hours. I got it in. They have this competition that's actually a real life one instead of the rock one in his head where they right. challenge each other to, you know, how long they work out, how many squats, how many sit-ups. If you want to be a part of it, just shout how how long you worked out today. Then you, gotta, then you gotta have the flex on, you know. Flex. Oh, I haven't done it today yet. I haven't worked out yet, but I'm starting to get going. Okay, Dan That's hasn't good. worked out yet, but he's still got it. I ate McDonald's and laid in bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was my day. Good. I went to the all-you-can-eat buffet with Cinderella. Nice. Yeah. Of course, Stevie Richards answers back. I worked out for two hours in one minute just so he could top me. But my minute, you know, I'm doing another 50 minutes with David Arquette, so I got your beat. So there. Right. You guys can work out and then what? Tigger. That's it. Tigger. So, David, you got the Charlie Brown tattoo, right? Yeah. Don't you think Vito should let me get a Little Mermaid tattoo on my arm? Well, I mean, if you want to get it, it's your body. You don't want her to get a Little Mermaid tattoo? See, he's such look a at this, Look at this crazy tattoo. Holy shit, that's my next one. Oh, that's, that's my next one. I also got this one. Oh, he's got the flair. Yeah. Flair, yeah. He's oh, got the flair. He's got our two favorite wrestlers tattooed. Have you got a Piper one yet? You need a Piper. Yeah, I'm going to get a Piper one. He's the a Piper. That's my buddy. I love Roddy. He was great. Wow. I want, no, seriously, I'm going to get a Randy Liz, Ric Flair. So I got to catch up to David. And then a Little Mermaid because now David said if I want it, I have it. So he's very big stickler on the tattoos. By the way, they're a pain in the butt. I mean. Yeah, they really are. Once you, get, once you get one, then it's like addictive. See, I got a really bad lucha tattoo, so now I'm just trying to put little black and white ones all around it to kind of make it more of a motif. <laughs> hide, the, hide the bad one. I have one in the center of my back that he absolutely hates. It's a cat with a crown on it. So I wrestle as the queen of the cat fight. So he absolutely mm. hates this tattoo. And ever since then, it's been like, no more tattoos. No more tattoos. He took me to get one on my shoulder. And after that, he was like, done. So I have one on my foot, but he hates that tattoo on my back. He hates cats. He's like an anti cat guy. Yeah, I hate them. Say that. I got more tats than anybody. Not tats, cats. You hate cats. You have cats everywhere. Your whole body's a tattoo. I hate cats, dude. I hate cats. <laughs> this is the most random part of the interview. David, I hate cats. <laughs> the kids wanted a cat. So they started posting on his Facebook wall pictures of tough guys with cats like Goldberg with a kitten. And they just were like trolling him so bad because they- Oh, have you ever seen a, what are they called? A Savannah something? A Savannah cat? I think it's called a Savannah cat. You probably like one of those. Are those the hairless ones? No, they're like almost baby tigers. Oh, he would probably like that. If he could walk it on like a chain leash. Yeah, I think you have to walk them on chain leashes. Wow. There you go. Now we're getting one. A Savannah cat. I'm going to get a Savannah cat. I got a boxer dog and he almost lost his mind, but I waited until he was out of town. Then I got a dog and said, Oh, we have a dog by the way. That's how it worked. What about a Flemish uh, rabbit? Oh, they're huge. Steve, <laughs> the cat guy, he's in here going a Savannah or a bangle one. Oh, a bangle. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are huge cats. I think they're also like super kind of dangerous. They could be, you know, cats are like crazy. They'll just go and like, yeah, they can get like a little nuts. I always had cats growing up, but he, yeah, the hairless ones are called the Sphinx. Justin says Maine Coon. Those are big too. But yeah. Vito's not a cat guy. Now, so you I know just, what's going to happen? Stevie Richards and David Arquette, I'm going to buy a wrestling company. I'm going to hire you and I'm going to write a storyline for both of you. <laughs> <laughs> what is it going to be? Like a battle for the cats? Like uh, It's going to be good. <laughs> See, I'm going to put it out there. Put it out there. 
Or a guy who hates cats, you sure do love Tigger, and I think he's in the cat family. Just going to put that out there. I just read Disney for you. <laughs> I didn't think around. <laughs> I took him out just like that. I'm like, Tigger's a cat. And then just like, bam, he's done. What? I'm what? really happy about this interview today. Huh? I'm time? happy about everything. I'm happy about life because now I'm going to get that little mermaid tattoo and I'm an inbox save and I'm going to be like, look, I got it. <laughs> and then when Nina throws me out, David, I'll have my little, like, my little walker in your door and I'll be knocking and I'll be like, hey, listen, I got to sleep on your couch. Just like Dice, I'm going to have to sleep on your couch. <laughs> you know, that was out. funny. They threw me in that seat at the end. That was, that was the best. I make bad choices. <laughs> <laughs> that was my life. <laughs> did you really? Did you really I drew from your, my own personal. Yeah, you really? Is your house really burned out? I just made bad choices. <laughs> that was my favorite. It's good, it's good to that. add limits, some stuff. Yeah, yeah man. That was good. awesome. So, what's tougher, dancing with the stars or wrestling training? Nothing's tougher than wrestling. This has been so such an amazing like experience, but so so tough like you know i don't i had no idea how tough it is how tough you have to be to you know i have more respect for it than i ever had it's really what i wanted to sort of learn about it all just get an understanding of uh of it and it's cool because once you get back into it because you know i had a little bad taste in my mouth after all that stuff and people started dumping on me so uh, you know i stopped uh, you know watching quite as much and then then little things started coming around like Lucha Underground and, you know, some of the SoCal scene. So then I started getting back into it and Lucha Baboom, that's out here too. Yeah, that's good too. I like that I love too. that thing. I'm doing that on the 25th and 26th in LA. So That's awesome. Lucha stuff. So I don't know. It's just been great to get back into wrestling and then, you know, be a fan. And there's so many things like Powerbomb TV and uh, uh, High Spots and, yeah, Fight TV and, and WWE Network. I love what WWE has still anyway. You know what I mean? It's just a sort of different, it's like the Disney of everything. And then you have these like little independent movies. You know what I mean? So yeah. I like I love it all, really. And you could watch some of the old stuff, which is so great. And I love hearing the old stories, like Bruce Pritchard telling stories about some of those big matches. I love I love the Ric Flair 30 for 30. That. I I can't find that. Now, where do I watch that? I've been trying to find it. It's I'll, it. I'll find it for you. Send you something. I'll find oh. it. I'll send it to you. I'll find oh, it. Thanks. I'll get you a copy. It's really good. You'll like it. They mixed uh, interviews, photos. They even did animation for some of the stuff from back in the day. It was like kind of like a groundbreaking deal. And he did it right before he got sick. So wow. all this stuff leading up and then all of a sudden he got sick and it was like, wow, like Ric Flair lived this crazy, crazy life. We were just watching uh, this morning and absolutely in tears. I don't know if you've ever seen Ric Flair and Jay Lethal doing dueling promos on each other. I didn't. I haven't seen it. You've never seen it? I'll send no. that too. Well, I gotta You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually crying laughing. It's so funny, but you'll love it. That's wrestling. That's entertainment. Yeah. And Flair gets it. So oh, yeah. that's like the best person to watch is like Ric Flair because he really encompasses that like celebrity wrestling old school, like sets the tone. Definitely sets the tone. Do you have any other questions that you would like to I'm ask? I'm good. I got a whole bunch of stuff, good stuff from David Arquette. I'm good. You're a good man. All yeah, right. Guys, I really appreciate you having me and I look forward to running into you soon. Yeah. yeah it'd be good to meet you. Good to see you. And, uh, you know, keep up the good work. Keep your head up and don't let people discourage you in the wrestling game. You know what? A lot of jealous people out there and they wish they could be in your shoes, especially when you have an opportunity. Thanks. Hey, if somebody's attacking you, like seriously attacking you, like now it's like we're fighting, are you allowed to, like, like choke them out? If he did. Need, if you need to. <laughs> Tell him, to, right? tell him about the fall. So then that's a fine example of choking okay. someone out. <laughs> when I, if you ever look up Riot, Vito Riot in the fall, uh -huh. back in 2011, right? I went the first tour. I get off the plane. I beat the hell out of the guy. All the press, all the people were there. It was definitely a kayfabe situation. So I get into the hotel. Um, people were like going crazy. I go to the first match. First match is in this arena. 
and the people never had wrestling in their country. Oh my God. I go, I go in there. They had no idea. I go outside, I pick up a cup, stick it in my tights, you know, and then all of a sudden I, I hit the guy and it looked like I killed him the way he took it off. He just went like this. And it was just him. a regular like Dixie cup, like, yeah. you know? So all of a sudden, 16,000 chairs are coming at me and people are slicing my back with friggin' chairs. Okay. Not steel chairs. You know, like those, Metal plastic those ones. like plastic lawn chairs that are hard. They were breaking and sticking in his back. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that was insane. So they had to get the National Guard. I had to take, I had to have uh, the army get me back to my hotel. They put army around my hotel. It was a national incident. It was all over the AP news. Greetings, Mr. Denny. Mr. So, Danny is our chat. So um, the next day, um, we had to go on TV and we had to do an interview saying, listen, you know, everybody needs to calm down. We're friends. So, I mean, because like the whole country was up in arms and they were like in disarray. Wow. wow. So the next, the next show, we go to the soccer stadium. We draw, we draw over 25,000 people. Come and watch me fight him. National Guard is all the way down, all the way in the ring. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I got through 5,000. I don't know if I'm going to get through 25,000. I wanted him to come home. I was like, show over. So I, I fought him. We did the match. That was it. I said, I'm coming back next year. I go back next year. Same thing. Sick. Get off the plane. Get up. Bang. Right in the jaw. Stop <laughs> kicking the hell out and rip his clothes off. Go back to the hotel. We have a championship match. First Nepal heavyweight champion. I win. People in Nepal are berating this guy. He was a war hero. He was all this stuff, right? So again, I go to the U.S. Embassy. Congratulations on winning. I don't understand how you win. I said, I didn't come here to lose. So these people are okay, fake. I go back to the next time. We'll go to the next arena. 25,000 people. The press was badgering this man so bad, worse than what you got. He came out firing and all cylinders to get his respect back. I said, you better calm down. You better calm down. So then it started to go, and I started to hammer him. So the ref was looking at me. He said, Vito, we gotta, you got to do something. I said, I will. I said, calm down, calm down. Finally, grab him in a front face lock. I reversed it into a choke hole. He said, Vito, you're choking him. I know. Vito is about to pass out. He's tapping. I said, I know. Vito, he's really, he, he's tapping out in front of everybody. I picked him up, threw him outside the ring. He gets up, he goes down, he gets up, he goes down. He comes back in the ring. Is he ready to finish this now? Now everybody's watching this. So I think you better finish. So he gives me this stupid chop. I sell for like three minutes, going like this. While he climbs <laughs> the rope, comes off, he beats me. People knew. People, they cheered, but they knew. I'm walking and you're back. Like this. I'm back in. <laughs> I'm going back up the aisle. Six foot six general stops me in the middle of the thing. I said to him, I said, "What are you going to do? You're going to arrest me?" He said, "Vito, I'm a big fan. I see what you did out there. I just came to walk you to the back." I said, "Thank God." <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to get deported. But it was horrible. You talk about the real and the yeah. emotion of people. And when you have to stop something, you got to have the confidence in yourself to put the brakes and say, okay, I'm going to choke this guy out, settle things down. And once they know you can handle business, you're fine. Thanks. Have you got to choke somebody out? No, I don't want to choke anybody out. I don't know if I could. David, you know, if you ever need any advice or anything, now you have Vito's number. You can always. I really appreciate that. I will. Call me anytime, man. We we'll, we'll try to I'll help you any way I can. Man, if there's anything you know I could do, and even if you're in the area or training or anything, or you need that help, absolutely. Try to work something out. Or if you want to go to Disney, we'll go. We'll hit the Magic Kingdom Love together. It. Love it. Disney expert. So like if you go, yeah. like you're definitely getting knowledge. Nice. It's not choking dudes out knowledge, but it's pretty much like, hey, you're in the haunted mansion. Did you guys know the singing skull guy is the same guy that did Tony the Tiger? <laughs> right? Every time. Exactly. Every time. 
<laughs> this has been a fantastic interview. I'm going to close it up. Thank you, David, for being Thank with us today. Happy anniversary, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, David, for your movie. Guys, remember Vito, October 5th, AMC Theaters, The Church, Bill Mosley, Clint Howard, Lisa Wilcox, who was on Nightmare on Elm Street, who we will get back on here. I was sick. We missed her. Um, BigVito.com, HarlowInc.com. The Big Vito brand on Twitter, Instagram, Reality Tea Spiller on Instagram, Twitter, and that's it. David, what do you have to plug? You have a plug, David? Yeah, uh, that's it. Just, uh, oh, I got a Northeast Wrestling match on November 9th. I'm, I'm on the same card as Kenny Omega, so I'm pretty excited. That's going to oh, be That's, that's good. He's amazing. Yeah. All right, David, thank you very much for coming on. David. We greatly appreciate it. This is the Big Vito brand signing off. Peace out, my peoples. Bye-bye. Thanks, you guys. This has been a production of The Big Veto Brand. You can now check us out at our new home, thebigvetobrand.com.